So the title of my message tonight is Come as you are. Amen? Amen. Let's say it in Creole. <laughs> Come as you are. Yeah. So we're going to uh, read uh, from the Bible. But first thing is, just want to know, how many, how many have ever been to a friend's or a family's place and waiting to get something to eat but never got it? Someone? Someone here? Salila? <laughs> no? Yeah, especially when you've driven like gone for a long distance, go to that friend's place or family and then waited for some food and never happened. I've been there um, and it's frustrating. And see the story that we're gonna look at. Um, everyone's heard of the, the five loaves and, and the two fishes, yeah? Mm -hmm. The story when Jesus feed the 5,000. So we're gonna have a look at that, but before, before we go into that, I just want you to know that the Bible is real. Amen? Amen. And it's not just fictional stuff, it, there's actually factual stuff. When I was preparing this message, I saw uh, some research, some archaeological research that was recently done this year in July. If you could look at the photos, that's the site near Galilee, Sea of Galilee, where they said the miracle might have happened. And what they found is the archaeologists found that the site, this site, is where they said that might have happened. Uh, that's that's a five, five, the fifth, sixth century church. That was burned down by the by the Persian that uh, raided the area, uh, and they have some mosaic um, drawings. So that was supposed to be like the, the basket with bread. Um, see the people um, looking at the stuff, finding all those mosaic um, things back in the early church, so the fifth century church. So if, if that's there, it means it happened. The fifth century church actually put those together from the mosaic thing, and that's just been recently discovered, July this year, uh, from one of the early church. And it's, it just amazes me. And that's what I'm going to preach tonight. Amen? Amen. Amen? How many are glad that we serve a God that's living and there's actually facts to prove that he actually walked this earth because that's just near the Sea of Galilee. So uh, we'll, go, we'll read the Bible. If you can turn with me in John chapter 6, verse 1 to 13. I'm going to read. You got it? Amen. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. That is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs that he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on the mountain and sat down with his disciples, and it was the Jewish Passover festival. It was near. Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him. He said to Philip, We shall buy them some. Oh, sorry. He said to Philip, when Jesus looked up, so he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread to, these, to feed those people to eat? Uh, he, asked, he asked him only to test him, for he already knew what was in his mind. So, slight change, yeah. So, verse 7. Philip answered him, It would take more than a half a year's wage to buy enough bread for each of the people to have just a bite. Another, his, another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Hey, here, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far, how far would they go among so many? Jesus said, how the people sit down. There's plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down. And Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated, as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When Jesus, when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered 
them and fill the 12 baskets with the pieces of five body loaves left to her by those who have eaten. Amen? Amen. So tonight my message is come as you are and we'll look at this passage of scripture and there's this five points that I want to draw out in this, um, in this chapter. You are enough. Amen? I you know you are enough. In, in verse 9 it says, Here is a boy with five barley loaves and two small fish. But then, how far will that go? We, we doubt sometimes what God can do with the little that we have. We, we, we all have to start somewhere with little. Amen? Sometimes the, the little myth makes us feel inadequate, not qualified enough because we think it's too small. Like even here in this church, we are not many, but, and that might think, oh, we're just little, we're just a small church. No. God looks at the little you have to offer. Amen? God looks at the little. You don't need to have all the dogs in the row or be perfect. As this little boy, no one would think that from the miracle actually started from that little boy, from what that little boy had. So he was little and he had only a few little things in his basket. And we sometimes discourage ourselves thinking we're too little, too poor, too broken. Some, some people might even think they're too rich to even come to God because God will not take them because they're too rich. This, this are here, or oh, too sick, too broken, too far gone, the list goes on. But God doesn't look at what, how the world looks at you. God looks through his, God, when God looks at you, it's different from what the world looks at you. He's not asking for big sacrifice, just the little that you have. The little that you have, God can use. The little talent that you have, the little strength that you have. He says, in your weaknesses, even in your weaknesses, you can bring that little weaknesses to Him. He'll, he'll use that. God, God will use the little that you have, the little courage that you have. Sometimes we, we might be scared because we think if, if we just put the feet out, it, it might ruin us. But if you, if you just take that little step of faith, take that little step of faith and, and, and go ahead with that. Don't listen to the negative voices. Last week, I don't know if you guys remember when I, when I spoke about communion, about Elijah, you know, the little flower that he had. Uh, that, that the widow had and gave to Elijah, make a bread to, for Elijah, and God used that and he was overflowed. His, his bonds were overflowed. God looked at the little that you have. Amen? Amen. It's more about the obedience. And, and if one thing as well, if you look at that scripture, God, Jesus thanked for not only the bread, but for the two small fish as well. So, it might be insignificant what you have in your hand right now, but if you just give thanks to God, obey Him and trust Him. With, with the world, you will, you will never be good enough. You will never be enough. But with God, you're more than enough. Amen? With God tonight, you're more than enough. Are you guys with me? Amen. Yes. Amen. Second point is, trust the provider. Mm -hmm. In, in verse 5 to 7, um, Philip came to God. He's like, it's going to cost too much to feed these people. And in, in other translations, it actually says, uh, it's going to cost 200 denarii. That was the, 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 the currency at the time. And one denarii was a day's worth of salary. So 200 was like over a half, that's what I said, more than half a year's wage. And th that's a lot of money. And and even that, he said, even that 200 denarii wouldn't even feed the people probably. They would actually get a, a popcorn chicken probably. <laughs> get a small popcorn chicken in their mouth. And that's, that's what happened. But that, when we look at that though, it's like, we understand that we always have negative people around us. Like Philip's like, where are we going to find that bread? that amount of bread to feed all those people and how many how many know there's always people who's gonna say well 
do you think you can do it? When we started the business, uh, I remember Priscilla had a chat with the previous boss. It was like, you're not the leader. Who do you think you can, what do you think you can do? And that's true. People look at you in the physical eyes. There's nothing wrong at what Peter said because he was actually looking from the natural sense, in the natural realm. But the thing is, how many go, how many knows we are spiritual people? Amen? Amen. And if we're spiritual people, how do we look? We look in the spiritual realm. We don't look what the eyes see. Because the eyes will always deceive us. What we see with the eyes will always think, ah, oh, weak. We don't have enough money to do it. We don't have enough courage. What can we do? We're too brown, too black, too whatever. Like, yeah, there's always, there's, oh, if you find negative stuff, you'll always find it. If you want to find stuff to discourage you, it's easy. Easy to find stuff to decorate, discourage you. And it's, easy, it's easier as well to find people who back you up to discourage you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. But the thing is, Jesus already knew. Jesus already knew what he was thinking. He only said that to test him. But the thing is as well, God, when, God, when things come your way, God, God also wants to test you. But in, in his word as well, in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, He will not test you above your strength. When he's testing you, he'll know that you actually have the strength to do it. To take on the next challenge. He knows that nothing can put you down. But he just wants to see if you have faith to trust in him. Amen? Do you have faith to trust in him? Do you have faith to trust in him? Amen. Amen. Amen? Do you have faith, Samuel? Yes. It's similar to when uh, Isaac went to offer, so Abraham went to offer Isaac for a sacrifice. God tested him, tested his faith. And the thing is, when he went there, God already provided the realm for him. And similarly, when God tested the Philip and the guys, he already knew that boy had, was there with the little that he had. He already knew, he already provided for your faith. You just need to step into that faith. You just need to trust and step into that. Don't doubt the little talent, the little gifts that God's put in you. So, no matter how big the second circumstances might be or the challenges, how many know literally it's impossible in the natural eyes to feed 5,000 people from just five loaves of two fish? And it says it's not big fish, but small fish. But in, in the supernatural realm, it can be done. Like Simon, look at what you have. Philip looked at how hard it would be because there was not enough. But Simon looked, ah, oh, there's that boy. He has this little, maybe we can use it. So God will test you, but he already knew from the beginning. He knows, he knows the end from the beginning. He knows what he can, that nothing is possible for him. So we have to trust him. And, and step out. Amen? Number three. Abundance come when we obey God. There's abundance in, in the obedience. Verse 12 says, When they all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather pieces, the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of five only loaves left over by those that have eaten. How amazing is that? Not only were all those five thousand fed, but there was twelve baskets left to overs. Amen? Mm. That's that's just how amazing God is. If we trust God, He will not just meet your meet your need. He will exceed your need. He will exceed what you can think or even imagine. That's what he, His Word says. He will He will not just do. Okay, you're gonna feed those five thousand, so I'm just gonna provide for five thousand bread. He's gonna exceed that because God is a God that doesn't do things small. Amen. He does things. Be extravagant because he's an extravagant God. He would not, he would not do things 
he will he will use the little things and make it big because the thing is he wants to have the glory so that you can't take that glory saying I have done that by myself you can't tap your, your chest and say ah I've done it now no matter how much you can try like in that circumstance you wouldn't be able to feed those 5,000 and that's just 5,000 men there was 5,000 wives or back in the days they had two, they had two or three wives there <laughs> And they had like a dozen kids. <laughs> so you're talking about fifteen to twenty thousand people there that were fed with just five bread and two fish. Amen? Mm, amen. But even that, there was leftovers. We we always read Malachi three verse ten uh, when we do tithes and offering and stuff like that. Mm. But it's similar. God says, Bring the tent to me and test me with that. But what he said, if, if you read, um, if you turn to me with me in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it says, five, uh, Bring the full tent into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and poured out a blessing for you without measures amen but he said full tent what it means is the little you have bring all bring all that little that you have if you have five fish five loaves and two fish bring that because he will use all of that and exceed your expectation tonight i'm not preaching i don't like prosperity gospel i'm not preaching a prosperity gospel but i'm preaching what the word said if we bring obey god bring the, the little talent that we have the little thing that we have in us that we want to start a small business start it trust god and start it because god will do great things with the little that you have the bible says don't despise small at the beginning mm -hmm. no matter how small it might be no matter how like a mustard grain is tiny but the Bible says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you say to this mountain, get out and go there, it will go. Because God loves the small things because he wants to shine his glory through that. Amen? Amen. But the other thing as well in that verse, if we see, it's like God, Jesus said, uh, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. Sometimes when God blesses us, we waste things, we waste resources, we waste what God gives us. When God gives you blessing, steward it well. Don't waste what God gives you. Because when God gives you, He gives you to be a blessing to other people. Don't try to store like that rich man, try to store everything in his storehouse for himself. God doesn't like that. God blesses you to be a blessing to other people. When God blesses you, let that overflow flows to other people mm -hmm. god bless you to be a blessing to other people it's true what the blessing of god and channel that overflow to other people because you want to testify about how good and how great your god is if you are if you're stingy when god gives you something then what you have as well god will take it away because god gives you you can take it away anytime but if you mm -hmm. show god that you're stewarding and you're being a blessing to other people when he gives you then guess what there will always be overflow in your house there will always be food on your table there will always be things that you that you will have more to give to other people it's always the stingy that that thinks like you know there's not enough for them but when you're a christian you've got to show god's love as well like god shows you his love when he blesses you you have to show his love as well to other people amen Amen. Next one is be always thankful. Jesus then took the loaves and gave what? Thanks. 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 Distributed and distributed those to those who were seated as much as they wanted. And he did the same with the fish. Amen? Amen. Uh, one, one of the first things we learned as Christian when we first became a Christian was say grace mm -hmm. how many still say grace today amen? amen 
Sometimes we forget it. But that's what was one of the main difference when we became Christian that we learned to say grace. Because saying grace teaches us that what we are having is not by our own strength. It was given to us by God. It provided the strength, it provided the courage, the intelligence that you needed to earn wealth, to have what you have, to have food on your table. So give thanks and say grace. Sometimes we think it's, it's weird, but it shows difference in us. You should, like Joey, you, I know you do that, but when you teach your kids to say grace, that makes a difference with the other kids at school. When he's sitting down and she's saying grace to what else, people will be like, why are you saying that? And that started, that's a conversation started. I remember when I first came to Australia as well, when we go to um, KFC, we go to anywhere. We would say grace and people looked at us weirdly. But that was the difference. Back in the days as well, that was what showed the difference in Christian people. When you say grace, people think, oh, they're weird, but they're not weird. But because after that, they will ask questions. Why do you say grace? And that's when you can talk to them. But I say grace because I know there is a bigger God than me. And He is the one who provided for what I have now. And when we put God first, He will always provide more to us. He will always give us better strength. No matter how, how much you have, the little or not, always recognize where that came from. But sometimes we, we might forget it when we, we have abundant. When we have little, yeah, we, we say grace, but when we have a lot, sometimes we just think it's our own strength that we've earned all that. But learn to say grace in, and give thanks to God in all circumstances. Because He gives you the strength to earn it as well. Give honor to God and put Him first in all areas. God, Jesus could have said, Jesus could have said thanks only for the bread, but He said thanks for the fish as well. That showed us that every area in our life, every single area, be thankful for your job, be thankful for your family, be thankful for your car you can drive, be thankful to be in a country like Australia. There's so many things we can be thankful for. Be thankful that we're still breathing, we're still alive. We can, we, I can stand here because God allowed me to stand here. I'm thankful for that. Amen. Be thankful for the little things that God gives you every day. Be thankful for clothes you got to wear. That's a new shirt, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sonella. That's my, that was my birthday gift. Be thankful for everything you have in life. Um, sometimes we, we think we have it so bad that, you know, we can't thank God for anything. But you know, guys, there's, there's actually people in worse circumstances like you right now. There's actually people in wheelchair right now. When, when we were looking at um, a floor plan last time, we actually, by regulation, we actually have to keep a certain dimension for wheelchair to go through. And that makes us realize, we are, we are like, ah, oh, we don't need, <coughs> well, people would not probably come in wheelchair at, at that office, but the thing is, there are actually people like that right now in wheelchair. And we got to stand here, walking, breathing, enjoying life. It's something we need to be thankful for. When I, when I had my car accident, in just that snap like that, in just in a second, I couldn't walk. And that's the thing. You learn to be grateful for being able to walk. Because when you go through things, that's when you realize that the little simple things of life, if God doesn't give you the strength to do it, if God doesn't give you the breath of life to do it, simple as walking, you, you can't do it. Amen? Amen? Everything in life, you just have to be thankful about. And I would encourage those who have kids to start developing that spirit of gratitude in your kids. They, they copy from you. Start developing that because... When, when we start developing a spirit of gratitude, we change our focus on the negatives. We start focusing on the positive that what we have right now. The family we have surrounding us. We are not a big crowd here, but we can be thankful that we know if something happened tomorrow, we have people around us. 
we got to be grateful for that. Amen? Amen. Be grateful for what we have. When you start being grateful, that's when your attitude changes. You start uh, being happy about life. Not everything's going to be the same, but you learn to enjoy life better. Because if you're always grumpy that you're not having enough, things are going to get worse. You're always going to be angrier. But when you're thankful for what you have, people are going to say, oh, what's, what's wrong with you? You have all those things you still be thankful. Because the joy of the Lord is what? My strength. My strength. Amen? Amen. So learn to be thankful and have a spirit of gratitude. Last but not least, rest in Him. I have uh, Ansley on the keys. Learn to rest in Him. In, in verse 10 it says, Jesus had the people sit down. And there was plenty of grass in that place. And they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Sometimes we try to figure it all out. God doesn't need you to figure it all, figure it all out. Just come as you are. Just bring those five breads and, and those two fishes. And rest. I'm not saying I'm not saying to be lazy. Here we are. When God says rest in me, it's not saying being lazy. But it's saying, partner with me, let's do it. Don't do it on your own. Don't strive on your own thinking you can do it by yourself. Because you probably can, probably can go 10 miles, but with God you might have 100 miles. Amen? Amen. Don't stop striving with your own strength. The scriptures is not saying, you know, be lazy, but you know, when we walk with God, he, there's, you get an extra strength to do things better. To, you, you learn, uh, you get more creativity coming from God when you try to trust in God more. There's many, many things in our area when um, we try to do it by ourselves, and then when things go wrong, you go to God for help. I mean, like that. I'm like that too, as well, sometimes. You go all around, all around, all around, instead of going to Him first. The thing is, God is a good God. He will still bless you, even though if you've done your 10,000 rounds and come to Him afterwards. But the thing is, it would have been a lot better, a lot easier, save you a lot of time. So go to him first and let him, you know, help you work things out. When we learn to spend time with God, Psalm 23 says, He will make you lie down in green pastures. Because guess what? He's your good shepherd. He set a table before you and me. You just need to trust in him. Amen? Amen. So, Tonight my message is not a big one. It's just come as you are. Trust Him that He is the one that provides. Rest in Him. Be always thankful. And when we obey Him, that's when the abundance flows. So tonight I just want to invite you to um, if you stand with me. Um, to, to bring to, to, to just reflect on the little things that you have that what's gone 